at my house this week, my mother-in-law's car needed some emergency repair. So because of that, I haven't been able to work on the Cadillac or the Cadillac motor at all. So her car at this point is waiting on parts, so there's really nothing else I can do but start on this car. The very first step you need to take in order to get this Camaro back on the road is take off the stupid Z28 decals that somebody thought was a good idea. So I've already done that and you can see, you know, you can kind of see where they were. I'm going to have to clean that up later uh, with paint cleaner and stuff, but take off dumb stuff. That's step one. Last week, I went to O'Reilly's and I picked up a $60 battery, one of the cheaper ones that they had, but I also got belts for the car. So it was a little interesting getting belts for this car because this is an AC car um, and it also came with a smog pump and as you can see, there's no longer the AC compressor or the smog pump. Smog pump goes in the middle, AC compressor goes next to that above the power steering. So if you need belts for a car like this, you end up getting the belts for the no AC, no smog pump cars. There's one belt that runs the alternator and the second that runs the power steering. So we got a battery, so let's go ahead and turn the key and see what will turn on when that happens. Let's turn the key to on. All right, looks like the tack went down to zero. Let's we'll try outside first. Let's we'll try the lights outside. Looks like we have tail lights. Right. Looks like we have two headlights. Some turn signals. That's that's good. Let's try let's try the horn. No dice. Don't hear anything on that turn signal. Don't hear anything on that turn signal. I don't think they're working in the front. Nope. It's like we got some column work to go. Alright, let's turn that off, turn the lights off. The oil light came on, well, that's good. Um, looks like the fuel gauge might work. Temp gauge might work. Let's try this. 17. Now this I'm saying testifying at a work. All right, there's some radio working. All right, let's try. Window works. I'm afraid to put them all the way down for fear that they're going to uh, not go back up. Let's see, fan motor. Nope. Last thing is locks. That one's obviously broken. We'll try this one. We got movement. Doesn't mean anything though. That doesn't work. That's okay. But hey, that's that's not bad for first try, so let's see if it'll turn over. I like that. All right, I checked the oil. The oil looks good. Um, as you can see in this awful Bubba thing, there is gas getting pumped up through the carburetor. Whether you know that's enough or not, I don't know. It's squirting much. That doesn't look like the accelerator pump is working. Actually, it looks like it's leaking out of the accelerator pump. Probably needs a diaphragm shot. That's a joke. Alright, so let's do what you probably shouldn't do. Let's do that. Let's get some gas down in there. Let's see if that does anything. I have a feeling the fuel pump's good. I think it's the carburetor that's going to be the issue, so let's go ahead and see.
gas and well got lots of gas all over the car. Do not recommend this at home at all. <laughs> Don't do that. fired up and it sounded okay. Um, of course I didn't bring any torque spits with me to pull the top of this carburetor apart. Um, well that wasn't too bad uh, for the first run. I know that we're going to need some carburetor work. I'm really tempted to just put a real carburetor on it instead of old rock junk. Um, but as I said, it's the $500 challenge. I can't waste 300 of it on a brand new carb. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this this pump, because it's not doing anything. There's no gas burning out of anything like there should be, and it's leaking out the top. Let me show you. Alright, when you normally move this accelerator, it's supposed to have, you know, gas shooting out of these little jets that are inside here. But as you can see, nothing happens. If you look down here, this is the actual accelerator pump, and it's got gas coming out of it. So I'm thinking that the diaphragm for that's bad so I gotta go back home and get some uh, Torx tips and I gotta take off the top of this carburetor and see what's wrong with it inside maybe it's just that that'd be great oh so I got the top of the carburetor off and of course in the full bowls are full of garbage but I did find out that I do believe that this accelerator pump is actually still good it might be old but it still does pump so when I pulled the carburetor part if you look I don't, this probably won't show up, but if you look down in this hole, you see that little gold part? That looks like a some kind of valve, and it was stuck all the way to the top. So whenever I'd push on the accelerator pump, no gas would come out. So I filled it full of B12. Um, so take a look at what it does now. So hopefully, with that where it's supposed to be, I can put these little jets back on. These little squirters back on and it should squirt like it's supposed to. Now when I got the car, it was low on coolant. Okay, that's that's fairly normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up full of used coolant. Now, you might be asking, what are you doing? Why are you putting used coolant in? Well, here's why. If there's any kind of leak or any kind of uh, problem with the cooling system, I don't want to put brand new coolant all over the driveway. So what I do is I save the coolant that I drain out of um, cars that I do radiator flushes with, and then I use it on cars like this that I'm not sure of. Now, if I find out the cooling system is good and it'll hold pressure and everything, I'll go ahead and drain it and put brand new coolant in it. But for now, this is what I'm going to use. These are 10 bucks a bottle, so in other words, free saving 10 bucks. Carburetor accelerator, accelerator pump is fixed. Got belts on it, got coolant in it, got gas coming. So let's see if we get it actually, actually run. The idle looks okay.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the idle up a little bit. We'll see if it will uh, stay running a little bit better that way. He was dying about, at least the tax said was dying about 500 RPM. It's a little low. We'll see what that does. Tighten up the belt. I think I have some loose pulleys down at the bottom. They're kind of wobbling. I'm pretty sure it's not the balancer. I think it's just the pulleys on the front of it. Um, I'm pretty sure there's an exhaust leak along his header somewhere. You can hear it. I don't have any more fueling. Got those all done with. Hopefully, I put a clamp on it, made the hose a lot shorter. doesn't go into gear at all. It's happened to me before if you watch the Bel Air video where I first take it out the driveway you can see that it doesn't move. Same thing with this one. So you look at the stick I mean there's absolutely nothing on it. I did check it while it was running that's how you're supposed to do it. Oh it's like a new stick too. So check it while it's running. I'm gonna go ahead and put whatever's left of this one in there first. So you're supposed to get the car up to temperature and then check the transmission fluid level. I don't think I got it all the way up to temperature, but I got close enough. It was hot, you know, running and all that kind of stuff. You know, no, no dice in the transmission. So we're going to go ahead and put in a bunch of transmission fluid from O'Reilly's. The first quart I already had in my garage, so that's going to cost. And I believe that the four quarts in this other jug are 15 Maybe seventeen dollars for those, so
you look right here, that's why all the transmission fluid was gone. Because it leaked out all the cooling lines, they go to the radiators, so I had to replace those. But luckily that's a couple hundred bucks. That exhaust leak is awful. So I was told when I bought this car that it doesn't have more than just first gear. Which, I'm going to say that's probably just a modulator. Our steering works fairly well, actually. Alright, we have no speedometer. Alright, we're gonna drive down this road, not on the main road. Let's see what it does. That's about right. There's no second gear. So, that could be something really bad or something really easy. Could just be the modulator's not getting enough vacuum or it needs a new modulator. So, it should be about a $40 fix. Yeah, it really wants to go really, really, really bad. <laughs> Into a second gear. But, you know what, what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it around, drive it back. The brakes are just like almost to the floor. Like, I'm surprised they they stop at all. I'm missing a rearview mirror. I oh, don't die. Come on. Oh, Probably a drive gear in the transmission. Wouldn't be surprised if that's out too. Yeah, this need brake. These need brakes like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Let's see. At least I can drive it back to my house now. Once we get the other cars done. Oh, front. Oh, he's not like that driveway for that reason. All right, next time, what I plan on doing is getting that transmission fluid leak fixed in the front. I'm gonna see if I can't get that pulley on the balancer to stop wobbling like it is. I'm gonna get a, a correct and better fuel line with fuel filter in it, rubber, hopefully mostly metal, no, no plastic. Um, and then the modulator in the uh, transmission, that needs to uh, be done, and then after that it's gonna be brakes, and then. Uh, once we can drive it like you're supposed to be able to, I'm going to do a tune-up on it. So hopefully that won't cost too much. So the total today was, let's see, belts were 10 bucks for the belts, transmission fluid was 20 and the battery was 60 So that's $90 today. Luckily for the carburetor, I didn't have to really buy anything. I was going to do another top gasket for it because the other one ripped in a few spots, but I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna bother just because it doesn't leak. So I think we're okay, but there you go, guys. First drive, 2015. So uh, the only place we can go from here is up. Um, so yeah, fixed a fuel leak already. Made a fuel leak as well. <laughs> so I'll probably do in a, a, you know, cheap oil change on it too. Fix some, uh, new oil in it just and then we you know what I'll probably do is I'll probably take the distributor out and drop it in the way it's supposed to be reset the timing make sure it's right um, maybe maybe new plugs and wires I'm at least going to show you guys how to bend them so they don't hit the headers these headers are great except for the other side where they got some Mickey Mouse running stuff running around up there so 
I'll also keep the transmission fluid with the car just to fill it up as much as I need to. So, well, that's a pretty good successful second video. Um, hopefully, here soon I'll be able to get it home and even wash it, and we'll see uh, what else we can do with it. So, thanks for watching, and keep looking for uh, video number three.